Well, hello there. You know, I'm so glad that I don't have to tell you what time it is. Yes, it is time to get in the Word of God, and it's time to allow that Word to, to get into us. Let me say welcome to Wednesday in the Word, and thank you for joining us on this last Wednesday of the month of March, and it's also what we call Ash Wednesday. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But before we jump into the lesson for the day, uh, you know, I must thank each of you for your prayers and every expression of love uh, during my 23rd pastoral uh, celebration. And I must thank you for your prayers and your thoughts and all of your comments. Uh, uh, you know, once I announced that, uh, you know, I was going to have oral surgery. So I was out last week. Um, trying to recover, didn't record anything last week, but thank you so much. I saw all your expressions of love uh, on YouTube and on Facebook, and I want you to know that I really appreciate that, and please continue to keep me lifted uh, in your prayers. Amen. Again, thank you for helping me celebrate 23 years at First Baptist Church and in Gainesville, and, uh, and uh, you know, I don't know if you call it celebrating the loss of two more teeth or not, but uh, anyway, we thank God that we survived it, and uh, just between you and me, I thank God they're still making teeth. Amen? Yeah, that's good. All right, and I want you to know that I felt the love. Amen. Thank you so much. I really felt the love. All right, so let's jump in our lesson for today. Have you ever felt, uh, have you ever had one of those weeks uh, where you uh, thought and where you said, uh, no matter how you look at it, it's been a rough week. I mean, have you ever come to the end of a week and, uh, you know, you said, man, it, it, it doesn't make any difference how you size it up. Doesn't matter how you look at it. It's been a rough week. <laughs> Amen. You know, I've had some rough and tough weeks. I've had some tough months. I've had some tough years uh, that the Lord brought me through. But nothing like the week that Jesus had leading up to what we call Easter Sunday. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Holy Week, a week of tragedy and triumph. Holy Week, a week of tragedy um, and triumph. And I just want to give a short overview of the days and events that we refer to as Holy Week. And it's called Holy Week because it is a recognition of the most immediate and the um, more significant events leading up to uh, Easter Sunday or leading up to what some call the Passover Sunday. And some of these are events that the Bible doesn't necessarily speak of as we speak of them and as we celebrate them. They are what we call traditions that we observe to honor the Lord and to commemorate the sacrifice that he made for us on Calvary. So as we look at this, I want you to understand, you know, because we celebrate Easter, we celebrate um, Holy Week and these days that are part of Holy Week. But we don't find these in the Bible as we present them. They are not presented that way in the Bible, but they are biblically based. They are based on the word of God. For example, in the Bible, there's no such thing as Palm Sunday. Okay, you don't find Palm Sunday like that in the Bible. There's no Ash Wednesday in the Bible. There's no Monday, Thursday in the Bible. There's no Lenten season. There's no Good Friday per se in the Bible. Amen. However, I believe that they are very good and worthwhile traditions. And again, Generally, they're based on the Bible. They're based on the truth. It's kind of like the movie industry would say of a movie that is based on a true story. Amen? So I want to say to you, these are tr traditions that we observe, uh, but they are based on a true story. They are based on the scriptures. Amen? You know, and of course, uh, we love celebrations and we love commemorations, so uh, no harm done. You know, plus, you know, I think of uh, uh, traditions, you know, traditions, memorials, commemorations, you know, how, however you want to say it. I, I think that they are indicative of a grateful heart. You know, I believe that that we want to remember things and we want to repeat things because we recognize 
the benefit it has been to us. And we understand that we are grateful for what God has done. And we just want to celebrate it. Amen. So I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. So this particular week, Holy Week, gives us a glimpse into the pain and the suffering uh, and, uh, and the sacrifice that Jesus endured on our behalf. Uh, I believe that it shows what he was willing to do and the extent to which he would go that you and I might be saved and blessed of the Lord. Amen. And although it's Holy Week, for many of us, most of the emphasis um, uh, and, and the focus is primarily on just a few of the days, uh, and for some, only one or two of the days. Uh, you know, we kind of focus on Palm Sunday, Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, and of course, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, amen. And then there are others, you know, kind of depending on the uh, uh, denomination, uh, uh, you know, some uh, have pretty much narrowed the week down to Good Friday and Easter Sunday, and some only Easter Sunday or the Resurrection Sunday. Uh, uh, and, and please don't ask me how the chicken, the rabbit, and the egg got in the mix, okay? Because I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, I, that's one of those traditions that, you know, we sometimes celebrate the First Baptist Church, uh, but we know that it has nothing to do with salvation. We know that it has nothing to do with um uh, with kn knowing and understanding Christ. Uh, but somewhere along the line, somebody made those connections, you know, and there have been some explanation for those. I won't get into them because uh, we want to focus on what's actually biblically based, okay? So we'll deal with that. Uh, you know, and as I look at it and think about it, I guess many of the people who started these traditions were very much like some of our folks from back in the hood, you know, we find anything to celebrate. I mean, whatever, man, we'd be ready to throw a party. It didn't matter what it was. So, you know, I think there were some people who were grateful, wanted to celebrate, you know, and wanted to commemorate what God was doing in and through their lives. And, you know, uh, so I have no issue with that at all. And depending on the culture, some may celebrate these same events at different times in different ways or even for different reasons, you know, or for a different purpose. I mean, I, I don't know. So as we look at these events surrounding Easter Sunday, uh, uh, they, are, they are found uh, uh, in the gospel. Now you can fi find related scriptures to uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ throughout the Bible. You can find related scriptures throughout the Bible. But what we generally refer to, refer to as uh, the Easter story uh, can be found in, in all four Gospels, Matthew 28, Mark chapter 16, uh, Luke chapter 24, John 20, and, and each of them with some uh, related details in verses or chapters before and after those. Amen? So please read and study uh, these scriptures in your own time, as well as uh, the uh, main scripture I gave you, uh, for the lesson is John 19, okay? So just throw that in with the rest of them and uh, read and study those scriptures in your uh, spare time. Uh, now, every day in Holy Week, every day is considered a holy day. You know, some of those days are specifically called that. And even when we call it Ash Wednesday, it's just where we're saying a holy day or Good Friday, just where we're saying holy day, it's still considered a holy day. And although we look at every day as being a holy day, not just doing holy week, uh, but we look at every day as being a holy day. But for, for the uh, purpose of our lesson, every day during the week of holy week, every day is considered a holy day and one to be remembered and one to be uh, celebrated. So I want to sort of go through it day by day to talk about this idea of Holy Week. And I want to begin with Sunday, which was this past Sunday, was what we call Palm Sunday. And I think most of you know this story. I won't get into it uh, too deeply. But when Jesus was, was, uh, had sent for the coat to ride into Jerusalem, and they would lay palm leaves down for him to uh, uh, ride on, 
uh, and the people will walk on them. So it's called Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday. Um, and, and so I want to open up with that Sunday, Palm Sunday, and say that um, Holy Week is a week of rejoicing. Amen. A week of rejoicing. That's for Sunday, Palm Sunday, a week of rejoicing. Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse number 35, and let's go through verse verses 35 through 38. And again, a week of rejoicing. And the scripture tells us, and they brought him to Jesus, the coat, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. Amen. They spread their clothes in the way, laid out their clothes, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples, listen to what he says, began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. Amen. Saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen. That, that's what I call rejoicing. That's what I call celebrating. As Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the, the disciples, the people, the multitude, they began to rejoice at Jesus coming in, and we call that the um, the uh, triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Now, normally, uh, you know, in that particular culture and other parts of the world as well, uh, it's kind of like a, a victory march. You, that usually would come after the victory, you know, after the battle, after the fight. Amen. But how many of you know, even before the fight is over, we've already won. We're already victorious. We can celebrate now. Amen. We can celebrate now. So this first, uh, uh, this uh, past Sunday, uh, that the Sunday that we celebrate uh, Palm Sunday, uh, that that that's what I want to bring out as a week of rejoicing. Amen. A week of rejoicing. But not only is it a week of rejoicing, it's also a week of what I call a week of restoration. And on Monday, uh, that, that's what I call the week of restoration, or at least that's what I want to highlight on Monday, the week of restoration. Uh, because we have to understand that we are but dust. Amen. We are but dust. So as we look at Jesus on this Monday, he has made his way into Jerusalem. And where does he go? He goes into the temple. He goes into the temple on uh, on Monday. He goes into the temple. And if you look at Luke chapter number uh, 19, Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse 45 and just 45 and 46. And Luke chapter 19, Jesus goes into the temple. Here's why I call it the uh, the week of uh, restoration. Amen. Everybody say it with me. Restoration. Yep. That's, yeah, that's it. Amen. So Luke 19 verses 45 and 46 says this. And he went into the temple. You know the story. And he began to cast out them. Listen, that soul therein and them that bought. He began to run them out of the temple, saying unto them, it is written, my house. Everybody say my house, my house, his house. Yeah, my house is the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. So why do I call it the week of restoration? You know why? Because there are times that Jesus has to enter this temple right here and throw some things out and restore us. He went into the temple. He restored order in the temple. He restored uh, the, the, the things of God and the ways of God to the temple. This is the house of prayer. Do you not know that our bodies are the temple of Almighty God? And there are times that God has to come within us, invade our space, so to speak, come in and run some stuff out of us. Amen. And he has to remind us, this is the house of the Lord. 
This is the temple of the Lord. And what does he do? When he runs this stuff out of us, what does he do? He restores us. Week of restoration. Amen. The, the week of rejoicing. Celebrate Hosanna. Week of restoration. He goes into the temple on that Monday. Clears it out. Because all manner of ungodliness was going on in there. And that's what he has to do for you and me. He has to come in and clean it out. When we allow evil to come into our spirit, Jesus has to come in and clean it out. But thirdly, I want to call it a week of reflection. A week of reflection. Tuesday, a week of reflection. Uh, amen. And I want to look at Matthew chapter number 26 and verses 36 through 39. Matthew chapter 26 and verses uh, 36 through 39. 39. Listen to what the scripture says now, because what did I say? As we have made our way to Tuesday, it is a week of reflection. Week of reflection. It says, then come, and you know this story very well, then come and Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane, and said unto his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Then verse 37, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Amen. He says, uh, then he said unto them, my soul, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. And basically what Jesus was saying to his disciples, his inner circle, I'm in a bad way. Because what? He began to reflect. Now, there are many ways we can reflect, but you know what he was reflecting on? He was reflecting on really, and, and we still, I want to still use that word reflect, but he was reflecting on something that has not taken place yet. But he knew it was coming. Amen. He knew it was coming. He was reflecting on the burden that he would have to carry in taking our sins upon him. And so it was bearing down on him. The pressure was great on his human side. So he says he's very sorrowful, even unto death. He says to his disciples, tarry ye here and watch with me. Then verse 39, he says, and when he went a little further, fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What is he doing? He's reflecting on what is about to take place on Calvary. And he says to the Father, so let this cup pass from me. But then you know what he said? The God side of him showed up and he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And that's what you and I must do, my friend. As we reflect on uh, even those things that have not taken place yet, uh, the, the burdens that we must bear, the service that we must render, the sacrifices that we must make. And as we reflect on that, it can get heavy on us. I mean, when you think about all that God requires and desires, because there's some things that God only desires, he doesn't necessarily require. Amen. But when we want to please the Lord, we want to do what he demands, commands, desires. Amen. We want to do it all. We want to serve him. We want to worship him. Amen. So that, that Tuesday, that Tuesday, a week of reflection as Jesus is in the garden. He says, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will. You know what he was teaching us? Not to be selfish. To make the sacrifice. To do God's will. Amen. To think about others before thinking about yourself. That's what Jesus was doing. He was thinking about you. He was thinking about me. So he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. All right. Then let's move on. Then I want to call Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, a week of repentance, because that's what Ash Wednesday is all about. Um, covering yourself in ashes. Uh, it denotes several things, grief and mourning, uh, but it also denotes uh, repentance. And, and that's what we ought to do on Ash Wednesday. 
we ought to, uh, and, and, and oftentimes people couple that with fasting. We ought to fast and pray and repent. Amen. And so when we look at Ash Wednesday, it's really kind of a solemn day because we are sorry about our sins. We're grieving, you know, over our sins and we want to make it right with God. So it's a day of fasting, praying and repentance. That's what Ash Wednesday is all about. And I hope that you're doing part of that today. Um, um, you know, some people fast and pray and uh, but more than anything, make sure you repent. Amen. Amen. So when we look in the book of Esther and chapter number four uh, in the Old Testament, when we look in the book of Esther and you find, you know, same thing throughout the Bible where it talks about they were in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, but Lord just kind of led me to this one. When you look at Esther chapter four and verses one through uh, three, it says, when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes, put on sackcloth, listen, with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter to the king's gate, clothed with sackcloth. Listen to what he says in verse number three. It says, and in every province, Whatsoever the king's commandment, and what the silver king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting and weeping, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Amen. Amen. So it means sorrowful, it means mourning, it means grief and grieving. But more than anything for us on that Ash Wednesday, it means repentance. It means repentance, that we are sorrowful, and that uh, and we it's not that we just feel sorry, but we are sorrowful, and we're led to to do something about it. So we repent. Amen, amen. So let's look at Thursday then. What I want to call the week of remembrance and the week of sharing, the week of remembrance, week of sharing. What they call Monday, Thursday. That's called Monday, M A U N D Y, Monday. Thursday, and that's generally related to uh, uh, service where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and it also uh, refers to uh, what we call the Last Supper or communion, the time that he had with his disciples uh, in the upper room uh, on, that, um, on that Thursday. So look at 1 Corinthians. Let's go back to the New Testament. And look at 1 Corinthians. And y'all know this very well. Many of you do. And many of you recite this uh, every first Sunday. 1 Corinthians, uh, verse number, uh, chapter rather, number 11. And I want to begin with verse number 23. Just look at verses 23 through 26. And uh, and you know it. And, and you know we, we mostly know this by heart because this is what we recite on Communion Sunday. And it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also... I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, listen, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Amen. So we look at look at these days, and then that helps us to understand what this whole week of Holy Week consists of. Amen. It, it helps us to understand why we do what we do. And, and, and do we not need to answer those questions, right? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing this? Why do we, you know, it, it's just, a, it's just, and then we talk about it like it's something terrible. It's just a tradition. Well, it's a good tradition. It is. It is a tradition, but it's a good tradition. Amen. And, and I'm glad about it. So when we look at uh, this Thursday, Monday, Thursday, again, it relates to service, uh, 
and humility because it's not only just the washing of feet, it's to, it's, it's to humble yourself to serve your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. It's to humble yourself to serve the Lord. Amen? And it's the sharing of the bread and of the cup in communion with the Lord. And it is remembering what he has done for us. And, and th that's a great reminder of us. And as a matter of fact, we ought to celebrate communion every Sunday to remind us of what Jesus did for us on the cross and how he died for our sins. Amen. Amen. So that brings me to, uh, and I'm going to kind of lump these together. Uh, perhaps on Friday, Good Friday, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I want to look at, at, at this Holy Week again uh, and look at Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and just close us out with crucifixion and the resurrection. Amen. A week of crucifixion and resurrection. Amen. And let's look at Luke chapter number 24. Luke chapter number 24. And again, most of these are familiar scriptures to us. And I want to look at verses uh, 1 uh, through 9 of Luke chapter number 24. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher or from the tomb. Listen, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't find him there. And it came to pass that they were, they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men who stood by, listen, stood by them in shining garments. And as they were, verse 5 says, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and what on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Amen. That day of, uh, uh, of uh, crucifixion and, uh, and resurrection. When we talk about this holy week of the Lord. This holy week. Amen. And on that Friday and through to Sunday. We celebrate the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that he rose? Aren't you glad that he got up with all power in his hands? Amen. So I want you to have a good Holy Week. And I want you to have a good celebration for Easter. Amen. And meditate on these scriptures that I've given us. Study these scriptures. Read them in your own time. And, uh, and I pray God will bless you richly. Okay. And uh, until we get together again, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, then we'll be on our way. Gracious God, we thank you so much for blessing us and keeping us. Thank you, Lord, for just uh, showing us and taking us a little bit deeper into your word and deeper understanding of uh, what we celebrate as well as why we celebrate and why we should celebrate. So, God, we thank you so much for this holy week. Continue to bless us and keep us as our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, my friend. And uh, if I don't see you on Sunday, I look forward to seeing you by next Wednesday. Okay? So you be blessed, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. God bless.